Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Thursday Night's Mike. Gandhi joined by DM. Trick Esports find themselves up. 1-0 after a very dominating performance, even going up against Onher, which is the first time we've seen him so far because of, well, PTS changes. That's right. I mean, uh, on her is a. I mean, e even besides on her, I mean, they had a dream lineup, and Trig just played it better. I mean, yep. plain and simple. Yep. London got outplayed, and I think maybe not to be expected, but they are technically the stronger team, much more, uh, you know, better in experience. They've been to more tournaments. They played in the yeah. spotlight a bit more. Yeah, for sure. So one of the big matchups that we saw last game was actually the mid lane matchup here, which we're going to go ahead and take a look at. But Lobster throughout the entire game on Agni, you got to just ban this character out against the guy. Uh, gold per minute, Lobster 447, just a little bit behind, but KDA is above. You know, you know what's funny to me is you look at Lobster, right? And you always see people trying to make that mean mug in the picture, always trying to look like a tough guy, right? That's what Lobster looks like. It's really <laughs> scary. Is it? He never smiles, yeah. never makes jokes. He's just like, hello, So DM. he's like you when you're streaming. Nice to meet you. Hey, I <laughs> tell all, you want to hear a joke? No. No, all right. No, at all. all right. Well, if you change your mind, I got you. Okay, well, I'll wait mad for it. Jokes. I'll wait for it again. I'll wait for it. All right. All right. Anyways, let's go ahead and hop into the uh, picks a band phase here, guys. London Conspiracy, they're down zero to one. Let's see what they can do. They have first pick. Let's see who they ban. Yeah, taking first pick again, a um, little bit weird, uh, considering they had it last time. Didn't really do a lot with it. I mean, they, they got all the picks. They got on her. They got Bastet. I mean, they were looking good. But they're going to start off with the Hercules ban again. And I, I can't say that I disagree, man. Tricks on this character is no joke. Yeah, and a lot of people look at Hercules as, well, that's a soul leader. No, 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 no. Not for Tricks. Tricks likes bringing that not bad boy into either. the dirt. Yeah, right? Yeah. Zayla's <laughs> like, that's not an assassin. Yeah, he's Even like, no, like, ooh. Well, you, you got boulder. Yeah, yeah. Driving strike boulder is huge. But he's like, I like all my assassins. And then, you know who's really fun? So bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's such it's such the opposite. You would think he would have met in the middle and been, okay, yeah, Osiris is really fun to play. But no. Uh, Athena gets banned out. Uh, widely accepted as the best support Got currently in the game. Raw, gone. Sight and gone. Option one. London Conspiracy, they first grabbed on her last time. He did well, too. Uh, Shaggy Shank doing a good job on, on her throughout the entire game. Shaggy Shank, really, it's more of a testament that he's so good than, I think, the character, but the character definitely helps. Uh, Thor going to get locked in. Uh, an answer back here of on her best that would spell absolute curtains for the early game for London Conspiracy, but we've seen Trig really favor the nemesis. Mm -hmm. So, option over here. It's going to be weird. Kilo Fred did really, really well on Thor. Nemesis gets locked in here. That's going to go to Zalia. Uh, the question is, is do they grab a mid laner, do they grab their jungler, or do they grab their support? I was thinking they were going to grab their hunter. On her still on the table. Ooh. Roll. Trig, what you going to do? Wow, okay. Okay, all right. Going to be up. Mir. Uh, option back over to London. On her still on the table, strangely enough. Um, as well as um, Bacchus. I mean, I, I could say definitely wanting to take that away Sylvanas. from Sylvanas. Sylvan is also very good, but they're going to go ahead and grab Bacchus. They don't want to deal with wow. having a god who can just contest every single objective no matter what. Belly flop, it, it, it's a knockup. So it's, if, as long as you hit your belly flops, it is debilitating completely. So they grab Bacchus. I'm on board with it. Do they grab their mid laner? Nope. They go ahead and grab on her, who somehow made it all the way this far. I was really hoping that we were going to see Fun Baller play on her. That would have been hype. Could be Freya again, not banned. It could, it could be Freya. Um, option, of course, back over to Trig, where they're looking for a slew of them. Ooh, they're going to pick Shiba Lanke into on her. Now, I talked a little bit about this match yeah. uh, in the previous game. Uh, realistically, this puts Shiba Lanke back into Season 1. I mean, this really should be Shaggy's lane freely. But then again, Shaggy somehow got out pushed by Freya in the long run as well. I mean... If Funball plays this well and keeps the pressure up, there's a good chance he could push Shaggy out just with sheer force of will, but it should belong to on her. Back into the ban phase tier, going to get taken away. A big shot to Snakeskin there. Mm -hmm. um, one more ban for London, and then option back over uh, for pick to Trig, where Bakasura is still on the table. Woo! Taking a look here. Emilzy top guardian here will be Sylvanas. He's still very, very good on Ymir if he does decide to grab him. Now, this is Europe, so... Uh, Ymir jungle is a thing. Uh, we could see that as Giannis oh, is going to get Lord. picked up. I, I've been, I've wanted this god to excel so much. He's impossibly strong. I mean, that's just what it comes down that, to. That, that's the phrasing, impossibly strong. He's impossibly <laughs> strong. 
Uh, the only weakness of the characters is er, is sometimes you portal some people out of your teammates' damage. That's Janice's only weakness. Is sometimes you mess yeah. up a team fight because you're not communicating. With perfect communication, he is the best character in the game. Granted, with human error, which of course will exist in any scenario, he's not as strong, but unless you're perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. You good? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm actually watching Dragon Ball Kai right now, and I'm during the perfect Cell Saga, and uh -huh. even he, he would probably mess up the damage. He doesn't have great teamwork. All right. Okay. Well, that maybe if he had better teamwork. All right. So you need better teamwork to go past perfection. Maybe if he was John Cena. I can't do anime, so I went with the exact <laughs> opposite. <laughs> uh, uh, Sylvanas getting locked in there. That means we're going to see Ymir go to the jungle. Yep. Or the solo. All right. So this is, this is great. So Kronos. We saw so much of him at the beginning of Season 2. And then for no reason, just kind of like fell off. Yeah. Kronos can swing on towers so hard. Yep. He, he's fantastic. Isis in the mid lane will have a mildly difficult time with Giannis. Besides early on, Isis should be able to outpush him very, very easily. But I will say, Sylvanas Shablanke, if you're worried about on her out clearing you, grab Sylvanas. Yeah, right? That's, that's the do. So with that, we're going into game two. Remember, guys and girls, uh, Trig Esports is up one to zero in a best bro. of three. Uh, what's up? Bro, 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 bro. Look at Cubo, Fred. He's starting off with a purple pot. Did he really? He's He went Bumba's Mask, purple pot, one ward. Every, you, hey, hey, hey. If you have purple pot and a ward, you know what that means, right? Invade boys? It's invade boys. Invade boys. We better see it. Well, based on his positioning... Uh, we get to see this really cool spike shell, though, right? Snapping turtle, Ymir. Oh, I thought you were saying they were going to build <laughs> spike shell. Before I even realized that it's not in the game anymore, I'm like, that's not a good idea. <laughs> I'll um, tell you what. One of my favorite things, just completely off topic, is uh, the Xbox Alpha right now is still in Season 1. So I'm just running around with Herc. It's so oh enjoyable. Oh, my God, Gandhi. It's... <laughs> So looking at Cubo Fred here, likely we're going to see him go into Glacial Strike. Yep. Uh, that's going to be 90 damage plus 70% of your uh, his magical power, so 70% of 50. So we're looking at 125 damage, roughly unmitigated, uh, from a level 1 ability. It's actually one of the strongest abilities in the game with that scaling. Dude. Uh, Ymir's very, very strong early, and you mix that with Zelia, who's going to have oh, a not natural... Invading. Yeah, not invading. Going with a safe approach here. Zelia with uh, Slice and Dice is really going to help. Purple Pot just gets used now. So he will have that for the laning phase. Obviously, just popping it so he can clear through the speed buff just a little bit quicker here. Uh, he's really my player to focus on. If, if Snakeskin gets caught off guard, he's pretty much dead. You know, I really like the dynamic that they've chosen to have the jungler not have a Hand of the Gods and give it to the solo laner for the early clear, because mm. Ymir is no stranger to damage. No. He will be able to clear any jungle that he wants almost instantaneously. Uh, the only weakness here is he's maybe not a very quick character, even with the speed buff, so he's going to have to be careful here, because if he gets hit by a stop time into a double tap or a Berserker Barrage, there's a chance he'll be giving up first blood, and if you have a 450 pot and you send it away, that's pretty much GG. And he, he's taken a lot of pokes. Snake skin and Sun Touch doing an excellent job so here. far. They should uh, rush it down uh, here. They're going for He's it. Dead. He comes in. Oh, he gets the freeze though. He interrupts the Berserker Barrage. They weren't able to follow it up. You can see if you're brand new to Smite, there's one thing that should stick out to you. Archers hurt. Oh yeah. Very badly. Minions in this game uh, definitely do a lot more damage than you know you might see in uh, a game like Dota or League of Legends. Um, and with that, it seems like no that way. was kind of the reason we didn't see first. Oh, oh! Double tap! Sun Touch <laughs> takes a 450 pot and throws it right in the recycling bin. It'll be used again eventually, but oh boy, Ooh. will it have to be processed. Man, that's that, gonna hurt. That was perfect positioning. Now, Thor early game helps. Impale into the wall, Trick Stank. He is Sylvanas, so he shouldn't really be close to death. And Mealsy goes for the belts, turning around. Jumps in, Shaggy Shank, waiting for Impale. He doesn't have it, so now pushes back just a bit, poking him down. He's going to accidentally get stunned. Impale sends him packing, <laughs> but you can see Shablanke comes swinging. Uh, Emilzi right there almost was going to be forced into a fight he didn't want to attend uh, with Shaggy Shank just on the cusp of getting grasped by that nature's grasp itself. Um, 
little bit risky there, but they managed to play it well. Uh, still a little bit confusing to me why Shaggy chose to jump in there without Impale ready. Perhaps he wasn't looking at his cooldowns. Perhaps he was just maybe thinking he could do more damage than he could. Yeah. But Trix Tank almost full health now thanks to the healing. Going to be in trouble. Eyes on Thor, though. Going into mid. He's looking on Cubo, Fred. In oh. comes the dunk. Doesn't oh. matter. That's a portal. I love Giannis, dude. No, uh, was that a portal? Oh, yeah, it wasn't the blink. I thought that was a blink. No, that was a portal. Tricky nonsense. Yeah, Tricky yeah Giannis nonsense. was just like, oh, okay, I'll step out. and Oh, oh by the way, here's a portal. Yeah, I, love, I love this god. Uh, and, and the, one of the biggest things, I, I, and I talk to a bunch of the NA players, and I go, why isn't Giannis playing? And they go, inconsistent damage. And I go, get more consistent. I love this guy. <laughs> you know, for me, it, it, it's, it's all about there's a lot of human error. But... If you're close, I mean, there's no way that you're going to do any less damage with an Unstable Vortex than you would with Wing Gust. Very true. Very true. I guess we're going to find out, though. Uh, Arrow, level 6 right now, uh, comparatively to Lobster, still level 5. Uh, a very small deficit, thanks to the fact that Ymir was kind of leeching a little bit in the mid lane, way well, before Thor was. I'll be damned if they're not looking to either start a fight or start this Gold Fury. Trix Tank pulls it. The zoning coming out from Cuba, Fred, you can just see his positioning. He's really just acting like a watchdog here. Uh, mid Harpies are down. Uh, they're just going to go ahead and rotate out of the Gold Fury. They pull off of that as they could sniff a rotation coming out. I didn't see it in the early game. Did Sylvanas or Shibalanke pick up the purple buff? I think it was Shibalanke. Hmm. But I, I, I wasn't looking at that either. I, I you know, I always forget to look. I, it's, it's not as important going into the four-minute respawn, but early game, generally, you'll see it go on to Sylvanas. Uh, but either way, Trix Tank and Fumball have been holding their own beautifully against this lane, which Ooh. realistically should have resulted in a kill at this point. But two games in a row now, Shaggy, whether it's a lack of confidence or just maybe a lack of understanding in the matchups, he has chosen not to aggress very, uh, I guess, as important as it should be. We saw yeah. the jump, but aside from that one jump, which really could not have been followed up, we really haven't seen much of on her. We, I think everyone expected this character to show up a little bit more than he has today. Yeah, you really have to gas pedal with on her as he uh, uses his jump passively again. Now, one thing sticking out to me here is we haven't taken a look at the solo lane in a quite some time is Kronos. Doom Orb, eight stacks and growing. Oh, Nemesis yeah. d doesn't have level three boots yet, which she's right on target. But Snakeskin right now with 10 stacks, he's looking to kill ASAP. Sun Touch is here as well. I think Cubo might have saw him with his third person view. Uh, Sun Dutch does have to be a little bit careful here. No, uh, he should. Is can he see it now? Nah. All right, here comes the counter gank's gonna be here. Zelia takes a lot. Here it comes Blink comes down. In comes the carpet. They've turned. They force the ultimate. They're happy. He comes back crashing in. He's looking for the help, and Kronos isn't there though. Sun Touch just waiting for his teammate. Misses the double tap. Stop time will slow him down, but not enough for the kill. You know, Snakeskin's team fight presence strong. His objective control, good. His ability to keep up with Zelia, who is a world-class solo, is amazing. If, but if there's one weakness this player has, it's he just doesn't seem to position himself well in lane on aggression. Right there, that was a guaranteed kill, and he threw it away because he didn't believe in his jungler. There was no level of trust there. Whew. Barely missing that. Stop time's going to hit as well. Zelia waiting on the dash. She's got Divine Judgment's going to save him a bit. Isis Wall is going to miss. The Wing Gust, she's on him. The Wall's going to try to protect. Arrow has to disconnect, unable to get that kill. And now Lobster looking. The portal's going to hit the wall. And barely, they're going to look for this, but they don't, they probably need to get out of here. <laughs> you know, one thing we're not seeing a lot from the Kronos players that we're seeing a lot in the SPL is Rewind. Rewind is not just a get out of jail free card or a way to get your health back. Sometimes it's just a way to better position yourself. And had we seen him use it there, there was a much better chance that we would have seen him get a, get a kill. Um, in the previous season, in season one, we didn't have a single Kronos player show up the entire season except for one uh, who was on the weakest team in the SPL, Thirst. Um, yeah, Osmos. They, they, had, they had a tough, tough season. One. Sure, but I mean, we're talking about Os Osmos here, who maybe wasn't the best solo laner you've ever seen, but when you gave this guy Kronos, who was considered pretty trashed here by yep. most of the competitive scene, Absolutely. he spread his lane. Doesn't matter if it was Divios or anyone else, he was consistently putting up enough pressure to push people out of lane. Yep. And it seems like we haven't had another Kronos player play to that regard. Oh, Sun Touch, he's gonna get frozen here. Do they have the follow up? The wall's gonna hit. Sun Touch is able enough. to take up to the sky, but not enough. Down he goes. Giannis comes here. That's going to be Lobster. 
as they will now clear that and stop the Gold Fury attempt from even being considered. That was a rather Ooh. curious kill. I really thought he was going to get out yeah, of there. Yeah, I thought he had enough to get out of there, too. But the, the dot damage from uh, Sylvanas was just a little bit too much for him to deal with. He gets up just barely before Ymir is able to kill him, but then Sylvanas gets the kill. And while maybe Sylvanas doesn't need a ton of gold going into this stage, it's still better having that jungler down than not. Ugh. Oh, God. I just looked at Ymir's build. Reinforced Greaves giving him a little bit more health. Uh, Ymir's passive is insane, right? I mean, he just gained so much health per level flat. And now he's going to be going into a breastplate, most likely, for CDR and physical damage, like, or reduction. Like, wow. You know, I would really actually like to see the Mail of Renewal here. Given the way that Trig has played, sustaining Cubo is going to be a little bit better, in my it's opinion. It's a very, very good point. Um, you know, and I don't really love the mana coming out from Breastplate of Valor, but the 25 CDR, I mean, you, you can't mess with that. No. I mean, 25 CDR on Ymir is definitely a big swing, and it would it'd be hard-pressed for him to get that off a of male of Renewal, uh, plus other items. Uh, but it, it's pretty surprising to me that he's going into Breastplate before Winged Wong. So, looking to aggress here. Wall hits. Not enough. The poke coming out from Arrow Ooh. using Wing Gus. One of the most annoying abilities in the world to lane against, just for the record, to vent. <laughs> uh, you know, Isis is actually a beautiful pickup into Janice because she's technically knockup immune. She can actually just go over, I'm pretty sure at least, go over the portals with Wingus and not be affected by them. Mm. Now, I'm not 100% on that, but I'm pretty I, sure. I've raised an eyebrow to that. I'm, I'm intrigued if that's I, the case. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Arrow clears it out. Sun touched. He's got the double tap. Spirit ball. Hits as well. They're not looking to finish out the killing blow, though. Waiting on the minions to get there as well. Uh, meanwhile, Sun Touch, he, he wants these harpies that are going to be spawning relatively soon. Giannis forced all the way out. Taking a look at Snakeskin here with 8-bit Kronos. One of the cooler skins in the game. When this skin first came out, by the way, I, I couldn't tell if my computer was just really bad or it was a skin. It's both. <laughs> uh, Snakeskin in a lot of trouble here. Rewind is not that good of an escape, and he will be picked off by the double ultimate usage coming out from Cubo, Fred, and Zalia. Big swing right there. Tower will be saved as they make their rotation over towards the mid camps. It, it actually looks like they're, they're, there's presence on the Gold Fury as well. Sun Touch uh, isn't there. Fun Bowler has started it up. Trick Tank. They're going to have to reset this as there goes Bacchus up in the air. Sun Touch now looking for it. Through space and times here as well. Spirit Ball is going to hit a bunch. Trick Snake's health is barely not even there. In comes Sun Touch crashing down. Berserker Barrage kills one. Looking for the follow up there. He's on Zalia. The wall will hit. Where's the follow up? Shaggy Shank getting a big kill on Cubo Fred. And now Fun Baller in quite a precarious spot here. He's got a Thor wow. looking at him. He's dead. Arrow straight up the hottest spirit balls of 2015. Dude. Back to back right there. Right. And with it, they're not only going to take three huge kills for zero, but right side tower is about to tie. You can already see snakeskins over there. They got the gold fury, and the gold lead is now 3,000. Lenin Conspiracy in the driver's seat now. Uh, traditionally, we see early leads tend to kind of tilt the hand to the win, but that hasn't really been the case in Europe. <laughs> so I'm looking at Zaley here, and you know, as the season goes on, it really seems to me that his Ooh. biggest strength is also his biggest weakness, and that's his god pool. I mean, he has been so comfortable with Nemesis, and he probably, probably plays more gods in current rotation than anyone else in the world at a tournament level, and yet we're first picking Nemesis every single time, when he's really the only one that can play it at that level. Why aren't we waiting to see what the counter pick might be? Because so far, this has not been a great pick against Kronos. The tower's about to fall. He's constantly forced back. I mean, he's two levels, or almost two levels down right now. He's having a very difficult time. Yeah. I, I think it really comes down to the comfort play. And although I, I, I see exactly where you're coming from. you got to grab the best, whatever the best possible god is in your lane, you should be the best at it, right? Sure. That, that's pretty much what you're advocating. But there comes a point at a professional level where I think you just kind of go, my comfort is here. I'm good at this. This is, this is my home. And as long as you're okay in your own skin, man, have at it. But I do agree that the best god should be played. Right side, once again, Snakeskin and Zalia going at it. Uh, the tower r just kind of lies in the balance. Rewind, not only going to be great there, but it's going to stop the Divine Judgment as a whole. Now, Zalia is just trying to buy time at this point, but he's put himself in a rather awkward Woo! position. 
Mid lane, Thor coming in right down. Suntouch doing a lot there to force away. Arrow picking up Cubo Fred at the same time, but Fumballer picking up a kill. Good trade right there for Trig. Ooh, Lobster's got to be careful. Uh, barely escapes out of this one is Arrow. He actually had to use beads that time, so I was really hoping to see if the portal did work with the wind gust, but it was already down. But he used beads to get over it. Left side, oh. Zalia starts to aggress. He knows rewinds down, isn't able to really finish it out. Wins the boxing match outright. Shaggy Shank goes ahead and pushes the lane. He knows one baller rotated, so I'll take a couple whacks at the tower. It's about half health already. Hard to say who really had a, an advantage of that fight. Uh, Fumball winds up. Oh my lord, the damage! One more hit, he's got it. Beautiful. Shaggy Shank able to get the kill. Forces out the ultimate from Trix as well. He's so happy. That is the dream. A Sylvanas ultimate not is just wasted and it doesn't kill you at 13 minutes? And he can't clear that wave. Yeah. Wisps yeah. don't help anymore. A oh, great job by Trix Tank. Using the fact that he will take aggro damage here. Shaggy Shank had to try to avoid... Oh, Nature Scraps almost hit him as well. If that would have hit, that would have maintained the tower aggro, stacking the damage even further. But Trix is getting sent back here. Fumball is just now coming up. Uh, and with that, they're not going to take the tower just yet. Instead, use it as a tool to strip away some golden experience from Fumball. Either way, big win right there for London. Not only getting a kill onto Shibalanke, but doing a crippling amount of tower damage. Wow, another spirit ball hits. Ymir, he might go down here. Waiting on Berserker Barrage. Instead, Thor's going to take to the sky. He wants to secure this kill. Right. Crashing down he is. Berserker Barrage doesn't clean up the kill because it's Arrow through space and time. Just kind of scratches Isis. I really expected that. He was going to try to make a play there, but I definitely believe that he shouldn't. And right there, Lobster definitely chooses the wiser of the two options, not putting himself in danger. Eyes on Trix Tank as he might make it a 10 Oh, baby! Links up. Four seconds Trouble. still. Uh, oh, here comes Nature's Grasp. Will he find Sun Touch with it? Yes, going to do some damage, but there was a shell there. But there's a Nemesis as well. Yeah, Zalia now thinking if he wants to chase down a Bacchus. Not sure if he will. Isis using Wing Gust to his advantage, clearing all the way out of there. Emil's he's going to stun out too. And look at Snakeskin. This is the problem is going to have in this matchup is can't that leave. he can't leave. Rose Kronos is going to be at his Phoenix in the next wave. Remember, the fourth section of his Accelerate is going to give him 45% of his total magical power back in his auto attacks. He's currently sitting at 245, so he's sending an extra 100 damage per swing into those towers. Of course, it is mitigated. But, I mean, you can see what he did to that tower in oh, a very yeah. short amount of time. That's a tier two. Yeah, pretty much Kronos's passive is a Flava Flav clock that you kind of just stop in different quadrants and he goes from there. But, yeah, I I'm really surprised we haven't seen more of him this season. Uh, he was regarded as one of the best hunters going into season two. Still think he is. As one of the best mid laners going into season two. Still think he is. One of the best solo laners. I mean... You couldn't put this guy in any position and not consider him one of the best. Taking a look at the player damage here, Thor leading the way. Top four this time. London Conspiracy last game was all about Trig Esports. This game, London Conspiracy holding their own. Thor seems to be the key. The thor Bacchus dynamic has been very strong for both teams, as at this stage, both teams have had the lead with this on their team. Uh, with that, Gold Fury not only started up here, but dude, it's wow. gone. That was... Whew. That was crazy. Beads forced out. Sun Touch gets out of there. Emilzy still zoning him out. Shaggy Shank looking. He's not going to find anything as he will be forced all the way out here. Uh, meanwhile, as we take a look in the upper right-hand side of the mini-map, you will see Zalia pushed all the way back to his tower and Snakeskin just running a clinic as to how to push down a tower. Mid lane, Tectonic Rift isn't going to hit, but another Spirit Ball. Well, Arrow, I'm pretty sure, is hitting 10 for 10 right now. Snakeskin keeping the pressure on Tazalia, who is basically out of mana at this point. Uh, there starts to be a rotation coming out from both teams towards the solo lane. You can see Cubo Fred getting ready to make an attempt to stop the Tier 2 from going down, but instead will find only resistance in his path. He does some damage, but Go! it won't be enough. No, Emilzy stops him from going through a portal. You can't drink and travel through time. Yep, Arrow now, down he goes, Emil Z still, he's actually caught in a weird spot here, Thor throws out the hammer, oh, Zalia might be down, down he goes, Snakeskin picking up another kill, and now he's trying to stay alive, he's looking for it, Snakeskin able to take wow. out another one, but he will go down, Sun Touch is just going to sit here and continue to aggress, because why not, 
He's Thor. He's dominated this game. He might as well do whatever. Meanwhile, left-hand side, tier two falls. Shaggy Shank will now reap the rewards of the jungle. That was a really big swing. Not only do they wind up with a huge power play on the side of Trig Esports, but they have the ultimate here. usage to begin with. They don't no. have any power. Oh, my. Oh Get out of here. All right, now continue your thought. <laughs> that combo of a knockup guaranteeing a double tap? Forget about it, bro. Yep, actually one of the strongest 2v2 comps and two parts of the, one of the strongest 3v3 comps in the game. Belly flop is and has always been a top five move in this game. Um, and it almost boggles my mind to think it traveled faster at some points. I mean, it's... What? Oh, you didn't know? Oh, that's right. You didn't know. Dude, I'm a noob, it man. It used to be instant. It would just hit people. You couldn't dodge it. Wow, that's... Yeah, it was, it was the worst thing that, that ever happened like to anyone. That sounds like sticking my face in a fan. <laughs> it was pretty close. <laughs> Jeez. The day it got nerfed, I remember uh, Matty Pocket oh, was on his stream about to get hit by it, and he just yells, Oh, you could just walk out of it now! <laughs> Obviously, players have gotten a little bit more attuned since then, as you can see, Emilzy has been pretty damn strong in his ratio of okay. hit belly flops. Uh, but even so, London takes two tier twos, a tier one, four, five kills for one over or two overall, putting them up 11k gold in 18 minutes with, well, let's see, two gold furies to their name. London should have this game in it, and it really seems to me like Thor and Bacchus are the answer. Yeah, this is going to be tough for Trig. It's very rare that we see an 11,000 experience differential and a team come back from it. So Trigg's back's against the wall here. They need a miracle. A and by a miracle, I mean they need London Conspiracy to start up a sloppy Gold Fury or just kind of miscalculate and take a bunch of damage from Fire Giant, come in and steal it. But I don't know if that's the case because London Conspiracies look so well. The Bacchus, Thor, as we already mentioned, really, really good. But as you just look through... I mean, Arrow has done everything. He hits another one. Sun Touch able to get one. Still going forward. Cubo Fritz here. He's got a big ultimate. He's no. got a lot of damage, but there's no follow-up DM. There was, that was directly in the middle of a circle protection. Right now, Fumble over the wall. Still going to find himself traveling through time. In fact, he'll be traveling for 45 seconds as he attempts to respawn back into this universe. Losing nobody thanks to the shell usage coming out from Emilzy. London Conspiracy will move and turn their sights to the Fire Giant uncontested. Yep, this is, this is a big problem here. Through space and time, down, but Gandhi. even still, Lobster and Zelia couldn't even contest this. They want. What? Look what? at the greed. Sun Touch is like, you guys got this. I'm going to go take their speed buff alone. Hey, do you blame him? No, there was a great play. One speed buff is, is the destroying. Speed buff is one of the best things to get. You get speed buff and you take it from the enemy team, and you literally laugh your way back when you're hitting recall. You're just like, <laughs> <laughs> see you, nerd. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> uh, just extending the lead. Lobster taking a look at Jandroid here. Uh, taking a look at the player damage as well. 12K Thor. Shablanke right behind him, which is interesting because we haven't touched on him much. He's 3, 4, and 1. He's got a couple deaths. He's negative, but... My big thing I'm looking at here is Cubo Fred, 1, 6, and 1. He's going to need to step it up here. Cubo, nice free spare ball. Going to be outside max range this time. London Conspiracy moving forward as three with the two remaining uh, joining them quickly. With that, all Phoenixes stand, but 10 kills ahead. 14,000, no, 13,000 gold, 17,000, almost 18 experience. Oof. I mean, they have the driver's seat right now. Complete control. Well. They're pushing in through the Phoenix here, DM. They have the minions to go. Emil Z, Blink comes in from Sylvanas. The engagement hits Divine Judgment onto Shaggy Shank. He jumps out. Thor takes to the sky, comes crashing down. Finds one, Arrow finds another. This assault from Trick Esports is just flawless at oh, this point. We're going to see a surrender vote here. Dude, look at this. They, no one died. We're going to no, see a surrender vote. They, no they one died to. from London Conspiracy. This was a perfect assault. They don't they... need anything here. Just take this, then go right in. Take the Titan. Fun ball right now is not going to have anything to do. He has three kills out of six on the passive, a low amount of gold. Uh, well, maybe not that low, at least not compared to this Titan's health as we're going to watch it fall. London Conspiracy going to even up the exchange here. Woo! We're going to game three. Yeah. My God. When I saw that Ymir get picked up, by the way, I was expecting huge things. But that was that was, that just it simply was not the case throughout. No, that we saw game. huge things. We saw the double tap at level two. 
Oh, yeah. That was huge. I, that I, ended the game. That that first bud. So what we're talking about here is at the beginning of the game, Ymir actually started off with a purple pot. Yeah. And it, what that means is normally you're going to see someone try to invade, but instead what we saw was Sun Touch punishing him for not having anything. Look at that. Shama. Oh, uh, beautiful. That's what you see out of Sun Touch, right? You you have this very, very confident player who just steps up, and he's just like, it's just con it's con constant confident playmaking. That's what it is. He, like, throws it backwards. He's a superstar. <laughs> That's what he wants to be. That's what he plays as. Yeah. And right there, the entire game was won off that first blood. Because when you take a Ymir and take 450 gold out of his pocket, it's GG. Yeah. Well, speaking of the player of the game here, should be no shocker to anyone as Arrow. He hit every spirit ball this side of the Mississippi. They're playing in Europe. That's a lot of spirit balls. Look, look at this. I mean, just watch the way that he plays. The silence is beautiful. But he is one of the only players that's properly utilizing Circle of Protection. I mean, constantly saving his team. Cubo Fred had nothing to do in any single engagement that Arrow was a part of. Uh, but right right here, this is the cute stuff. Just yeah. bop. Yeah, every just time. Routine. And then he's just, okay, yeah, Beats. whatever. Aggress on me. Circle of Protection's down. I'll pop it when I want. Gets a little bit of extra damage. Use Wind Gust to get out of there. And his positioning's just perfect for his team. This is what you want to see out of the mid laners. You want to see them way behind their front line, just right. poking them down, whittling, and just doing everything to the textbook. A beautiful, beautiful just example of teamwork. London Conspiracy for really sure. showing this game much, much different than what we saw for game one. And with that, we'll be going into game three. Yep, so ladies and gentlemen, we're hopping to a quick break. When we come back, game number three. Make sure you're tweeted out, though. Tweets. Tell your friends.